Welcome back. Prior to the season opener on Sunday, the PBA will honor uh, its top individual players from the past season in the Leo Awards. Now, will San Miguel's Junmar Fajardo set a new record by winning his fifth straight MVP trophy? And then who will take home the Rookie of the Year Award? Maralco's Chris Newsom and Cliff Hodge uh, still joining us here for, for that discussion. So, uh, Junmar going for yet another MVP trophy. Uh, it is, a, is it a foregone conclusion that he is going to uh, bring home that trophy? For me, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I sure. think so. I think, yeah. uh, I think everyone in the league basically knows that uh, June Mar is, uh, you know, one of the most unstoppable locals that has ever played in the PBA. And, I mean, the, the stats are all there. The wins are there. The championships are there. So, uh, I think, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sure that he's going to get it. Because when he got injured, that sort of created an opening right, right. for other guys to yeah. at least try yeah. and be in the conversation, right? But why is it so hard for other guys to, you know, convince people that, hey, you know what, I can beat Junmar for MVP? Why is it so hard? Um, for me, it's just uh, like what he brings to that team. Like, it's just everything he does for that team, he makes them win. So uh, for me, the only way that he doesn't win uh, MVP every year, even from now on, is uh, unfortunately if he if he gets hurt. So uh, that's one. Or if um, if he doesn't win any championships all season. Yeah. So uh, if he doesn't win any championships, then other teams that do win championships, the other players on those teams have a chance. But for me, like if they keep on winning championships, there's no way that he doesn't get it. Like 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 for instance, Paul Lee. They just won a championship, yeah. but. I don't know if people will look at Paul Lee right. the way they will look at Junmar yeah. in terms of impact to the team. Yeah. Correct. You gotta uh, you gotta see what kind of game plans that people have for certain players. So a guy like Paul Lee, you can double team him off pick and rolls. You can uh, you know you can trap him. You can do a lot of different things. With Junmar, you know every single time it's it's basically demanding a, a pick. I mean a, a double team, and he's so big that he could throw it out, uh, make a, a good pass, and he's got shooters all around him. Uh, so it, it really makes it hard to play um, honest defense or a straight one-on-one -on -one defense um, to, to have guys that size uh, play one-on-one -on -one and, and be successful against Jumar. That's going to that's going to be hard to find, but. Um, other than that, he, like Cliff was saying, he brings a whole other dimension to that team. And, and uh, for somebody else to do that, uh, that that's going to be hard, especially if you're, uh, if you're a guard. Um, you know, there's too many different strategies in the PBA that, that you can do for, for guards. So, uh, but it's not impossible. Definitely not impossible. Well, speaking of guard, Stanley yeah. Pringle, he's trying. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he can put up crazy yeah, numbers. numbers. He's yeah. a fantastic one-on-one -on -one player. He's yeah. a dazzling offensive player. What will it take for Stanley Pringle to, I mean, really get into that serious conversation for MVP? For me, um, for him to get into that conversation, they'd have to make the playoffs every time, maybe get to the finals a few times, and also win the championship. So for him and him to be the anchor for that team, um, so he has his hands full because you know I mean, I mean Globeport hasn't performed as well as everyone thought they would with the with the lineup that they got, but he has a chance if they can win a championship for me. But this dominance by Junmar, his ownership of this award, uh, is it going to end anytime soon? Do you guys see it? There's uh, a few there's a few things that that come into play. Uh, obviously health. You know, Jumar's been blessed to be healthy, uh, you know, throughout his MVP stints. Um, and, and that's, I think, the key to a lot of things. Uh, other than that, as far as if, if everyone's healthy and competitive, um, I definitely think it could be coming to an end soon. Um, we got a lot of young talent that's coming in. Team, a, a lot of the teams that are normally at the bottom are starting to fill their lineups up with talent. And, you know, games are starting to get more competitive. So, um, you know, whether or not somebody's going to be able to take over the league like that. Uh, of course, I dream of it someday. And then you got some, some other guys that are uh, capable of doing it too. But uh, it's just going to come down to stats, I think. Although, um, with the, all the additions that are, are adding at San Miguel, I mean, there's only one ball, True. right? So they all have to share it. So I don't know with, with all the guys that they got, if their numbers are going to, someone's numbers is going to go down. So 
if Dumar doesn't play as many minutes because Christian's there, mm -hmm. maybe stats-wise, uh, the other guys can have a, have a better chance to uh, get an MVP. Dumar? Dumar? He's no. old, uh, you know, he's, yeah, he's young enough he's to young. win, like, yeah. I don't know, three yeah, or four right. more I think he's 29 MVPs. Yeah, uh, yeah, you sure. mentioned Christian Stan Hardinger, and that's, that brings us to the Rookie of the Year conversation. Now, uh, Stan Hardinger, uh, I understand, did not play enough games yes. to be considered for this award, yes. but as you guys mentioned, would have been a shoe in easily, yeah. easily because yeah. of yeah. you know his ability to dominate. And Keith, a, yeah, and wins and wins. Yeah. Uh, Kiefer Ravenna, very unfortunate situation of yeah. getting suspended. Uh, also, would have been clearly in the running, yeah. and that really opened up this uh, this opportunity for Jason Perkins. Yeah. yeah, and you guys seem to have been impressed with what Perkins did his rookie year. Oh yeah, I mean he came in uh, unfazed, like not scared to play, uh, filled in that role for Phoenix exactly what what they needed. So he came in and uh, I was impressed. Uh, at least when I was playing against him, I, I felt that he, was, he wasn't he was a rookie. I felt like he, he had that old man game where he was confident in himself and uh, makes his outside shots, gets his rebounds, does all the dirty work. And uh, he stayed healthy throughout the whole, uh, the whole season. So that's, that's big and he's been big for Phoenix. So it's pretty good. Did you enjoy playing against Perkins or was he a yeah. handful? Oh, like I love playing against Perk because obviously we've been playing since Anthony Lasalle days. Uh, so seeing him in the PBA finally, that was that was uh, pretty cool. And uh, you know, I, I think we always had a mutual respect for each other that we knew we were gonna uh, both do well at the next level. And to finally see uh, you know his hard work paying off and to see how he uh, how he played this year, man, I, I'm really impressed with how he was able to transfer his game over. But at the same time, I'm not surprised. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, you guys totally, completely, 100% expect Jun Marfardo to uh, win yet another. Yeah, and yeah. no idea when his streak will, yeah. uh, will end. It's not this year. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really up to everyone else yeah. to try and dethrone oh, yeah, him. For sure, for sure. And it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. All right. Still ahead. Giannis Antetokounmpo passes the ball to James Harden. But wait, they're not teammates. So we'll find out how this happened when we return.